Assalamu alaikum everyone, welcome back to another episode of Parasitology series. Today we'll be talking about Diphilobothrium latum. This is a cestode. I have a detailed video on cestodes. Watch that video first. Its link is in the description or in the top right corner of the video. Then you will have a great grip on the tapeworms topic. These videos are meant for educational purposes. Things and treatments may change with time. If I get wrong or miss anything, your input is always welcomed in the comment section. Let's get started. Diphilobothium latum. It is a cestode. It is also called as fish tapeworm. It is responsible for causing the disease diphilobothriasis. It is an intestinal parasite that affects human beings. Lecture outline. I have introduced you guys to the Diphilobothrium latum. Now we will talk about its morphology, habitat in transmission, life cycle, pathogenesis and epidemiology, clinical findings, lab diagnosis, immunity, treatment, and then the prevention. Morphology. It has three different forms. First one is egg, the second one is larvae, and the third one is adult worm. Let's start with eggs. Eggs are oval shaped. They are brown or yellow in color. Why? Because they are bile stained and they have an epoculum at one end, especially at the bottom uh, of their shell. And they are about 31 to 43 micrometers in diameter. So we are supposed to visualize them under the microscope. They are not uh, visible with the naked eye. And these are released by the gravid proglottids in this tool. The feces. Larvae. The embryo present inside the egg differentiates into pleurisarcoid larvae. Then this pleurisarcoid larvae differentiates into pleurisarcoids. These pleurisarcoids are also called as poganum larvae. Larvae is responsible for causing diphilobothriasis. Adult worm. It is the longest of the tapeworms, measuring about 13 meters in length. It is long, segmented tape-like or ribbon-like. It is creamy white in color. The adult worm has the following. Scolex. In contrast to other cestodes which have suckers, the scolex of the Diphilobolsium latum has two elongated sucking grooves by which the worm attaches to the intestinal wall. The scolex has no hooks unlike tinea solium and echinococcus and it has no oral openings gravid proglottids. The proglottids are wider than they are long and the gravid uterus is in the form of the it rosette. It is dorsal ventrally flattened. It has 3,000 to 4,000 primary uterine branches and it has a genital pore with the help of which it is responsible for releasing eggs, the immature eggs. And it also has botria. What are actually botria? Botria are slate-like grooves that run longitudinally and the worm uses the bothria to attach to the intestinal wall of the human beings. Neck. It is a proliferative region. It means it was responsible for giving rise to new proglottids. Here on the right side, you can see the gravid proglottids and the different segments of the diphilobothrium latum. The whole body is called as trobila, but I have taken a small part of the body because uh, it is 13 meters long. I have zoomed in the one part and it is actually gravid proglottid. And inside the gravid proglottid, you can see the rosette uterus. Habitate, definitive host, human beings, intermediate host. The Diphilobosium latum has two intermediate hosts and both are the freshwater hosts. The first one is cup pot crustacea and the other one is freshwater fish like pike, trout and pot. There are some reservoirs of the Diphilobosium latum like bears, minks, canines, felines, etc. Transmission. The route of transmission is fecal oral route and human beings are infected by ingesting raw or undercooked fish containing larvae, the pleurisarcoid or spoganum larvae. Life cycle. Life cycle of Diphilobothrium has three stages. First one is human Pot cycle. cycle. Second one is cup pod crustacea cycle. Third one is fish cycle. Human cycle. Cycle begins by ingesting raw or undercooked fish containing larvae and it begins in the human beings. In the small intestine, the larvae attach to the gut wall and develop into adult worms. 
the gravid proglottids release fertilized eggs through a, a genital pore, and the eggs are then passed in the feces. The immature eggs must be deposited in the fresh water for the life cycle to continue. Before the copepod crustacea cycle begins, the embryos, onco the actual onchospheres, emerge from the eggs and they develop into coracidia. And then these coracidia are eaten by the tiny copepod crustacea, the first intermediate host. And there, the embryos differentiate and form prosacoid larvae in the body cavity. Fish cycle. Make sure that you remember these are the freshwater fish like pike, trout and perch. When the copepod is eaten by the freshwater fish, the larvae differentiate into pleurisarcoids in the muscle of the fish, the second intermediate host. The cycle is completed when the raw or undercooked fish is eaten by humans, the actual definitive hosts. Diagrammatic representation of the life cycle of Diphilobothrium latum. In the first step, you can see the unembryonated eggs passed in the feces of the definitive host. Then, the eggs embryonate in the water and form coracidia. The coracidia hatch from the eggs and are ingested by the first intermediate host, the crustaceans. Here you can see the crustacean. Then, the prosarcoid larvae develop in the body cavity of the crustacean. An infected crustacean ingested by second intermediate host, usually the small freshwater fish. The prosarcoid larvae released from the crustacean develops into pleurisarcoid larvae. And then the predator fish, like paratinic hosts, eats small fish, pleurisarcoid invades tissue. And then these fish in the undercooked form are eaten by the definitive host, the human beings. And then this cycle goes on and on. Pathogenesis. Infection by Diphilobothrium latum, the Diphilobothriasis, causes little damage in the small intestine. But this damage has three stages. First one is development. The pleurisacoid larvae develops into immature adult. Then the immature adult develops into mature adult tapeworm. The second stage is attachment. The worm attaches to the wall of the intestine with the help of suckers and the bothria, the slit-like grooves. The third stage is release of the immature eggs. These eggs are released by the uh, gravid proglottids in the feces of the infected in human. some individuals, megaloblastic anemia occurs as a result of vitamin B12 deficiency caused by preferential uptake of vitamin by the worm. Epidemiology The epidemiology of Diphilobothrium latum infection is related to the ingestion of raw or inadequately cooked fish and to contamination of bodies of fresh water with human feces. This disease is found worldwide but is endemic in areas where eating raw fish is a custom such as Scandinavia, Northern Russia, Japan, Canada and certain north central states of United States. Clinical findings. Most patients are asymptomatic but abdominal discomfort can occur due to diarrhea, epigastric pain, abdominal cramps, vomiting. And anemia and the signs of anemia like pale color fatigue will also be present. Lab diagnosis. We will collect samples like stool, feces, blood and serum. Then we will visualize the feces under microscope for the operculated eggs. Those and these eggs are brown to yellow in color because they are bile stained. And these segments of gravid proglottids are also visualized under the microscope. We will also examine this tool for the presence of eggs. This is how the eggs will look like in the sample of feces under the microscope. The bile stained operculated eggs with a knob at the bottom of the shell. On the left hand side, this is an egg with an operculum and an embryo inside. And on the right side is the uh, some section or some parts of the body of the Diphilobothrium latum worm. And it has the, these gravid proglottids inside it and these proglottid has the rosette uterus inside them, which are responsible for releasing the immature eggs. Biologic tests are done. We'll also look for serum vitamin B12 levels and those will be low because of the megaloblastic anemia and imaging techniques like gastrographin x-ray examination.
we will look for red blood cells count, size and shape of red blood cells, white blood cells count, and in the white blood cell count, uh, we will find eosinophilia, because eosinophils are a type of white blood cell. Immunity. Exact nature and mechanism of immunity developed against the antigen of Diphilobostrium latum is not clear. Treatment. Drugs of choice are prazicontal or niclosamide. Vitamin supplementation, especially vitamin B12 supplementation, cause of the preferential uptake of the vitamin by the womb. Surgical excision in case of intestinal obstruction by the womb. Prevention involves adequate cooking of fish and proper disposal of human feces. Let's review everything real quick. The organism is Diphilobothrium latum. It is responsible for causing diphilobothriasis. The mode of transmission is fecal-oral route and it occurs by ingestion of larvae in raw or undercooked fish. The intermediate hosts are two. These are freshwater copepod crustacea and freshwater fish. And the definitive hosts are human beings. Main sites affected in human body are intestine. The diagnosis is based on percolated eggs in this stool. And also we can uh, sometimes find the proglotters in this stool. And the treatment of choice is praziquantel or niclosamide. It has no insect vector, and the stage that infects humans is the larvae in undercooked fish, and the stage in the humans most associated with the disease is adult tapeworm in the intestine, and it can also cause vitamin B12 deficiency. The important stage outside the humans is the larvae in the muscle of the freshwater fish. And that's it for today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope you've learned something. If you have any suggestions, feel free to leave them below in the comments. And don't forget to connect with me on all of my socials. I've got my Instagram, I've got my Twitter, and I really upload blogs. Till next time, Assalamu Alaikum.